President Trump touching down in Poland a short time ago and kicking off his second foreign trip abroad as president. Tomorrow, he's scheduled to deliver a major address from the square that was the center of the Warsaw Uprising during World War II. But it's Friday's G20 Economic Summit in Germany that's expected to have the big fireworks of his trip, including a scheduled meeting with Vladimir Putin. Alona, you just you wrote a piece about this. I, I personally think that at least Trump can rest assured that no matter how he acts, that most people are going to find a problem to have with it because they're really looking forward to being some sort of problem. How do you think that Trump should handle this meeting? Well, basically what I wrote is that everyone <laughs> is going to walk away disappointed from right. this meeting. No one's going to get anything if they want. And that's because, well, because of the current political dynamics, there's not all that much that either Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin can really do. So you're right. Trump, because of all of the heat that he's facing here at home with investigations into uh, potential ties between his campaign and the Russian government, as well as election uh, interference in, in 2016, he is under a lot of pressure to not act too nice to the Russians, right, to try to take on a tough stance and be in a tough position. But no matter what, people aren't going to be happy. But he also doesn't have a lot of concessions. But to Alona, get. you warn against something that I think we really need to be paying attention to, and that is the dynamic between China and Russia. And if we make them both feel too alienated, maybe they form uh, some type of relationship amongst themselves noting that their uh, trade is up 30 percent between the two countries. What's your prediction there? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, th that is something that we're not keeping an eye on. And again, that's going back to this whole approach to Russia where so much of our focus right now is on the dynamics between Trump and Putin. But we have to be able to do more than one thing at one time. Yeah, right? but like, we're, why we're not doing so it. So China, yeah. China and Russia share a huge border. Uh, trade went up by 30 percent. A lot of Chinese tourism now is moving mm. into Russia and they're expected to spend about two billion dollars just in tourism this coming year. And there's a new Silk Road uh, mm. in order to increase trade routes that China is planning. And I'm not trying to claim that relations between China and Russia are super rosy. There's a lot of distrust uh, in, in that area, too, but it's something that you have to keep an eye on in the meantime because that's going to hurt America down the line, right? right. And, Eric, I, I really hate the fact that I feel like so much of the focus on this is going to be around stupid stuff like body language. Maybe they'll be timing how long the handshake is and did he look at him this way and make... I don't really care about stuff like that. I care about having relationships and having policies that are going to put this country and, in a good place. And I think Trump is the same way. I think everyone's going to analyze what the body language is and who the, who is who is the alpha male, who is right. the beta male. And it won't matter because I think Trump acts the same way no matter what people are saying or accusing him of. Remember, everyone's going to say, well, is he going to go soft on Russia? Russia's going to ask, ask if... The, if uh, if the sanctions can be lifted, remember President Obama put some final sanctions as he left office. Russia's going to ask for them to be lifted, and everyone's going to say, well, is this part of a deal to get him in office? He doesn't really care. The interesting part is he's going to Poland tomorrow, today and tomorrow. He's going to make his announcement. He has a very friendly ally in Poland. Right. Then he's going to head over to the G20 where he's going to sit down and probably get a cold shoulder from Merkel in Germany because of his pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord. And then he's going to sit down with the two most important leaders in the world to him, which China's Xi and, and, and Russia's Putin, and the three of them need to hash out two issues, <sighs> North Korea and Syria, and get her done, right? Because the world is a becoming a much more dangerous place with what's going on in both. Do you, do you think that it would be a mistake for him to bring up? Uh, there's a lot of pressure for him to bring up the election hacking. A lot of people want to see Trump do that, President Trump. I think he should bring up, uh, start looking forward, to be honest with you. I think that we should stop Russia from ever doing something like that again in terms of hacking a major party candidate's uh, servers. But we also should be forward thinking and we should look at how Russia can, as we were talking about in the previous segment, talk about North Korea and help aid in that situation. Maybe we make a deal where we drop some of the sanctions in exchange for their assistance. But in order mm -hmm. to look forward, you have to acknowledge the potential that something like election hacking actually happened, which the president hasn't done, and he's consistently just called it a hoax. So you can't just say move forward without first stepping back to that part. No, you I, could. I also you think could. that we you, should... Why, why would he have to address election hacking when he can say, as Evan points out, make a deal? Well, you, we'll, you can't we'll, just we'll work pretend some of your Russian this sanctions hypothetical may happen in 2018 based on something that is or, dominating or the news cycle now. What if we split the baby, though, and we don't necessarily acknowledge it in this setting, because, frankly, I don't think that would do us very much good. But, to your point, Alana, we pay attention to it. We get our people involved on it to do uh, put us in the position where it doesn't happen again, and then we move forward with the deal operation. I guess, but but I, I, I think 2016 is in Trump's rearview mirror, and there's absolutely nothing in it for him. Right, but I'm just talking about the domestic political dynamics. He has an audience to please here, and so at least bringing it up 
then allows him to move forward and talk about issues like energy, you know like right. the Arctic, like Ukraine, like Syria, like North like Korea, like China. One aspect we are missing, which is China. China has been aggressively expanding the new Silk Road, their expansion into Africa, the Caribbean, and Central America, threatening American uh, the economy by taking over our traditional well, I think areas. We, yeah, very tough. We can, we're all going to have an easier Friday probably than President Trump. A lot of tough stuff to handle.